Hi, I'm John Filardo, Vice President for Government Relations at the American Chiropractic Association. I'm standing here with Rick Miller, longtime consultant and lobbyist for the ACA. And today we're outside the, the Rayburn House Office Building, where last week uh, a lot of the action on health care reform took place. Now, Rick, it was quite a week last week. We saw a lot of action in, in the House Energy and Commerce Committee. People read about the blue dogs, what they've been doing. These are the House moderates, House Democrat moderates. Uh, it was a, a, a hectic week uh, in the House. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Right, John. Uh, well, you were there yeah. uh, rather late into the night. Uh, and, and, and maybe the viewers understand that what occurred uh, last week uh, was a breakthrough of sorts, at least in a tactical situation for the Democratic leadership over in the House because their efforts to move a bill forward, particularly through the Energy and Commerce Committee, had been stymied because the health care reform initiative uh, had garnered quite a bit of controversy, especially from centrist Democrats, conservative leading Democrats, concerned about costs, concerned about the size of government, uh, and, and they had objected to a number of original bill uh, called the Tri-Committee Bill, as you know. Uh, but finally, after a week of negotiations, of the, all of which took place behind closed doors, uh, between people like Congressman uh, Mike Ross, uh, leader of the Blue Dog Democrats, they were able to forge an agreement and finally vote out, really after uh, a, a couple of weeks of significant delays, uh, a bill out of the Energy and Commerce Committee prior to going on to the Congressional recess in August. And, and the Democratic leadership badly wanted to get this thing done so that they could say that there was momentum uh, there for the bill over the August recess. Yeah, and there were two things uh, that were important uh, uh, to, to our members. I think that they should know about uh, what happened in, in the Energy and Commerce Committee last week. Uh, one of the things the Blue Dogs pushed, in which we were firmly behind, is that uh, when they set up these public plans that they can't, uh, they're not going to be uh, reimbursed uh, using Medicare right. rates. That right. was a that was a big part of the blue dog push uh, is to not reimburse providers uh, based on Medicare. For we, we all know uh, a system right. like that uh, would be disastrous uh, for, for our members based uh, uh, on, on what's happening now with, with Medicare. Another thing that they uh, talked about um, was this whole notion of uh, uh, preemption of existing state uh, in, in, uh, regulations uh, that already exist on the state level. Now, there's nothing in the bill right now that really, uh, that really uh, takes out these state protections, but we wanted to make sure there's something in the bill that addresses that and, and, and make sure that, that these state regulations that the state associations and doctors nationwide have fought for for years. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, John, that was an important issue. And the situation is this. Uh, at the end of the day, no one knows what the final legislation is going to look like. It's still too early in the process to know because they have to get the final bill through the full house. Then that's got to be merged with what the Senate does. And the Senate is not uh, uh, complete with their work. They've not even been able to move the bill through the Senate yet. So a lot of changes are going to take place from what exists now, what was reported out of the Energy and Commerce Committee, for example. A number of changes are going to take place in that bill, probably before it ever gets to the House floor. And certainly the final legislation, assuming there is legislation that is signed into law by the President, is going to differ significantly, I believe. This issue of preserving the applicability of state statutes that protect consumers and providers is a very important issue for our constituents. And I think we made some headway because that issue had not resonated with most of the members, certainly not within the Energy and Commerce Committee. But we took a long way towards raising the profile of that issue with the assistance of people like Congressman Ross, and uh, there were some negotiations that took place, again, behind the scenes uh, with prominent and influential members like uh, Congressman Cologne of New Jersey, who serves as the subcommittee chair of the Health Subcommittee of Energy and Commerce. And so when they come back in September, it's 
our hope that we're going to see this issue of the preservation of state laws, insurance and quality laws, uh, things of that nature that are beneficial to Americans. It's a beneficial contract. We are hoping that we will be able to, in some form or fashion, work language into the House bill that addresses that issue. It's not a guarantee. We're not there yet. We've got to do a lot of work over the recess. Uh, but we did take a significant step forward on that issue. Uh, its profile's been raised, uh, and we've got the attention of some, I think, very influential members. You're very right, and I saw Congressman Ross as he left the committee on Friday night saying that uh, they will address this when they come back in September. This is a live issue. Um, what they're going to do, they, they have about uh, 50 amendments left to do uh, when they come back. Uh, in September. They're going to do those as part of like one bill. We expect this to be in there, um, but that's work they're going to have to do when they come back in September. Now just turning gears a little bit, the House, uh, excuse me, the, the Senate is still in session right now, and uh, however, uh, work has been slowed over there. As most of our members probably already know by reading their local papers, uh, the Senate Finance Committee has uh, kind of put the brakes on uh, uh, getting something out before they recess this Friday. Um, they are looking now at a September 15th date on getting something out of their committee. As you know, Max Baucus, the chairman of that committee, is, is, is working to get a bipartisan bill. Uh, there's been some rancor over there, however, that uh, uh, getting bipartisanship in the Senate is really going to be uh, a tough, uh, a tough nut to crack. But they go out this this Friday, uh, so next week, starting next week, you're going to have both the House and the Senate home on recess. Rick, what do we do? What do we tell our members to do uh, while while they're home in their districts? Well, the major thing they can do, I think the most effective thing they can do, is make contact with their local members of Congress, uh, particularly in the House of Representatives, and if they've got a good relationship with the U.S. Senators as well. Now, what's happening, John, is that public controversy and concern about the overall nature of the health reform uh, uh, effort here it, it, it is gaining quite a bit of controversy. That controversy is growing. It, it seems to be exploding out there in, uh, in, in the hinterlands, if you will. Mm -hmm. In this type of environment, our doctors of chiropractic and their patients need to make their views heard, need to make their views known, so that at the end of the day, it becomes very clear in meetings, which I hope they will arrange and set up in these local areas with their members when they're back in their districts, set these meetings up and make it clear to them that if legislation is enacted, that the final bill must ensure the availability of chiropractic care in any sort of benefits packages which are designed or defined at the federal level, and make sure that uh, state-based consumer and provider protections are retained. Those are very important issues. Now, there, there are only two uh, uh, of golly, at least, uh, six or eight different things we're working on with respect to the legislation. But those two are very important. Uh, we had good news on the reimbursement side of it, uh, at least in the House, as you mentioned, that not being based on Medicare rates. Uh, we want to make sure that's sustained. But getting that message, getting uh, politely in the face of these members of Congress back home in the districts where it counts, that's got to be the top priority over the next three and four weeks. Yeah, and we've got, uh, we've got lots of resources for you folks. Go to acatoday.org slash HCR, stands for Health Care Reform. Go to that webpage, you'll see our toolkit that you can use in there. We have talking points, tips for meeting your legislators back home, and all sorts of other good uh, uh, information for you uh, when you make these meetings. Go to house.gov, www.house.gov, uh, to find a schedule of these town hall meetings as they happen in your area, and also go to senate.gov to find out uh, when and where uh, senators will be in their home states. Rick, goodbye for now. This Thank has you. been a great talk.